Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome to the ECHS Gardena Parent and Student Meeting. I am Dr. Cindy Guardado and I will be leading this meeting today. With me today, I have Allison Diaz, the founder and director of um, operations, or Allison, correct me with your title, please. Director of um, Growth and Sustainability. Thank you. And we also have our newest member to the team, Ms. Lacey Harris, and she is our Dean of Student Services. Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to um, be introducing you to a couple of team members that we have, with Ms. Harris being the lead of those introductions. We're also going to be giving you a communication update. We're going to be giving you information about our summer bridge, our academic, and info programs, as well as additional summer programming. If I can just ask you to please um, hold on to any of your questions until the end of the presentation, I would highly appreciate that. That is with the intent of us being able to answer as many questions as we can through our presentation. Um, and then that way we can funnel all of your questions and make sure that we have the right answer for you until the end of the PowerPoint. Once again, our mission is to always make sure that we are reimagining public education for low-income communities of colors. We want to make sure that all of our students are prepared, conscious, critical thinkers, people, students who are equipped to graduate from college and create a more equitable, sustainable world. Before I move on to the introductions, I am going to ask Ms. Harris to lead our quick um, activity for the day. She is going to tell you exactly what that is. Lacey? All right. So um, we'll put it in the chat um, unless you would like to um, take yourself off mute. Um, it's just going to be a little question so we can get to know you. I can also get to know you as I'm just getting started as well. Um, so that question is, um, what is something about your student that you appreciate or that you are proud of? So if you could just put a response in the chat, what is something that you appreciate about your student um, or something that you are proud of? Ah, thank you. Cares for others. And there's 45 people, so let's let's see some responses in there. Helpful, ambitious, creative, unique. Oh, this is awesome. Being responsible, hardworking, motivation, resiliency. Oh, awesome. Focused. Independence, yeah. Independent, responsible. Yeah. And helpful. <laughs> I'm working on my Spanish show. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> helpful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for adding. Very motivated and very helpful. Please feel free to, to keep adding. Uh, it's just an opportunity for us to, again, build community, get to know your student, get to know what you think, um, because that's one of the most important things is being able to share um, the special talents that your child truly has. And now you get a chance to entrust us um, with those talents and help grow them over the years that they'll be at ECS. Thank you so much. So I think that's the best transition right now. Like I said at the beginning of the meeting, we are actually in the middle of hiring all of our team. And Ms. Harris is coming to us as the Dean of Student Services. Ms. Harris, I am sure a lot of you have already known if you have been with ECS before, but she is coming to us with a lot of experience as a college and academic counselor. Um, and she will be joining us as the Dean for our 2021-2022 school year. She was also the founding counselor of ECMS in 2011, and then she went on to ECHS, our Lawndale High School, as part of the dynamic team of academic college counselor. So that is to say that Ms. Harris is coming to us with 
ton of experience, A through G requirements. She not only has the experience, but she also has the network and she has the dedication to come on board and be part of this great team so that we can support your student. And I'll let her, let her just introduce herself a little bit more to you now. Oh, thank you. Um, so I am excited for this coming school year. Um, as you can see, I've been around for quite a long time. Um, and, I, and I think that that speaks volumes, right? Um, what we we get a chance to do with your babies is you know help them grow help them learn about themselves um how to work with each other um and just become better humans whether it's in the classroom or outside of the classroom learning about the environment learning about social justice issues um things that sometimes a lot of other schools don't get a chance to have discussion about and it really prepares them for the world um, as they graduate as a matter of fact my first middle school class of students just graduated from college so there's quite a few students that drove me wild in the middle in their middle school years have are graduating from Humboldt graduating from San Francisco State I had three graduate from Berkeley um, a couple who are graduating from Yale so it's a really it's really exciting to see the growth um, of the students that started out at ECMS or started off at ECHS um, and were really and come back to the community because I think that's what also strengthens um, EC, ECS in, in general is that we have alum who stay connected, who come back, who work for the different campuses um, over the years and become mentors to, to students. And so in my experience, I love working with students and helping them being empowered and finding their voice, finding out who they are and where they want to go. They may not always know. Um, I mean, even as adults, sometimes we change our course of direction, but um, giving them a platform to uh, speak to other adults and, and have some insight as to what they can do, whether it's going into higher education um, or going into the workforce. Um, and then helping students become leaders um, is also something we we pride ourselves on because we want we want them to go off not just graduate from high school but thrive after they get out of high school so we want to equip them with the tools and resources that are kind of going to provide them with the skills that they need to um, be great leaders and adults in the future so i'm happy to be here and i am excited to work with your students Thank, thank you for the welcome. Thank you so much, Ms. Harris. And I want to point out something that she says. She used the pronoun we a lot. And I cannot stress this enough. This is a partnership. We are going to be working with one another at the school site, with our teachers, with her as the dean, with our office manager. But we're also going to be needing your partnership at home because we cannot do this alone. Just the same way that you are going to feel confident to pick up the phone and just express your concerns, ask your wonderings, you're going to reach out for support. It's the exact same thing that we're going to be doing when it comes to just needing a little bit more from you. If there's something that doesn't add up on our end, if your student is not showing up to class, if your student just doesn't seem the same, if your student is showing up with their head down, we are going to be making sure that we pick up the phone and call you because this is a partnership. Um, another brand new team member that I would like to introduce to you is Miss Medina. Miss Karen Medina will be our office manager. Um, she unfortunately could not join us today, but she is ready to meet you. She will be handling a lot of the enrollment. She will be the first face that you will see when you come onto our main office. She will be answering a lot of questions that you might have just in relation to about anything. Ms. Medina um, is coming to us from uh, Lions College Ready. She has many years of experience as a teacher's assistant as well as an operations associate. She also earned her bachelor's degree from CSUN or Cal State Northridge, and, and she earned her bachelor's in psychology, and she is currently working on obtaining a master's degree. She enjoys being able to support families and students in their or your educational journey, and she is looking forward to not just meeting you, but also inspiring you 
um, so that we can continue to just build a culture where you are welcome and where you can find the answers to any challenge that you might be having. As part of our founding um, operations, we also want to make sure that there are uh, means in which you can communicate with us and we can communicate with you. As of right now, I wanted to share with you our temporary phone number. Once we have the opportunity to be at the site and we're able to uh, install our um, phone lines, we will be giving you our actual phone number. But for now, if you can just please take a second to either take a screenshot of this phone number, write it down, we'll have it up for another minute. Please feel free to use it. It is a phone number that's coming directly to me. Um, so if you have any questions related to enrollment, any question around Summerbridge, just anything in general, please feel free to just call or text me um, during just regular business hours school day hours, and I will be more than glad to answer your phone number. Once again, that phone number is 424-445-6958. Thank you, Mr. Martucci, who has added it to our chat. And I will introduce to you Mr. Martucci. He is our Director of Student Services. Once again, 424-445-6958. We are also going to be updating our website a lot. If you have not had the opportunity to check our website, we have already updated our message from the principal. We have uploaded a lot of frequently asked questions, just questions that we have been able to collect from our previous meetings. Any upcoming date, any upcoming date for any upcoming meeting, you will also have the calendar invite under the information for new parents and students. So I always encourage you to please check our website so that you can get as much information. We are working really tirelessly to make sure that this website is updated on an ongoing basis. And that website, it's www.echsgardena.org. And you might even want to drop the www. You can just type echsgardena.org and it'll take you exactly to where you need to be. We are also going to be using Talking Point. All of you have already received the text messages. It is one of the ways in which we're making sure that you are in all of our meetings brief messages. I have sent communication regarding vaccinations. I sent the one where we had local um, places we could get vaccinated two weeks ago. I also sent the message today because we are now um, able to offer vaccinations to kids that are 12 and above. And so please make sure that you always keep our phone number handy or that you are reading any kind of messages that's coming from talking points. You can also reply through talking points and we will get your messages and we can engage in a um, two way communication then. And I will now hand off um, this part of the meeting to Miss Harris, because this is what I am sure a lot of you want to know our summer bridge program information. Ms. Harris. Mute. Okay, so Summer Bridge, um, that is going to happen in July. And oops, I think wrong slide. Uh, yes, so the purpose of Summer Bridge is for you all, for us to build as a community. Um, We've been doing distance learning, and so the hope is that we get a chance, one, to come to campus at least one day during the week. Um, I believe there's going to be three days of um, online learning and then possibly a field trip. Um, and Summer Bridge has always been kind of the bread and butter of um, events that happen for students as they enter ECHS, um, where they get a chance to meet one another before school starts, get a chance to get to know your advisory because your advisory group is who you'll be with for the next four years. Um, you'll get a chance to meet teachers and also learn about the culture of the school. Um, I think the unique thing that we get to do 
now is start creating a positive school culture that we want to see throughout our school year. We want to be respectful of one another's beliefs and differences and similarities. Um, we want to be able to have tough conversations, but respectfully um, and be able to connect with one another through different activities that you'll get a chance to do. Um, you'll also get a chance to hear from uh, current, I think they're going to be seniors. Um, we're also probably going to try to get some alumni um, to speak to their experiences at ECHS and give you some advice so you could feel a little bit more comfortable when you come to when you come to campus or um, when we're do, we're having conversations online. But we want you to engage. Um, so I know it can be a hard time, especially coming from middle school, coming from distance learning. Um, but we want you to just try your best. We're all doing something different here um, and uh, trust the process. I think that's one of the most important things is trust um, that what we are doing is going to be for the better good. Do we want to talk details of Summer Bridge? Okay. Um, so this is the plan for Summer Bridge. It would be two days in person. Um, so the first day would be a school site visit where you get to come on campus, do a school tour. Um, we would do some uh, safe social distancing, uh, team building activities. And then it would be time for technology uh, pickup and a math placement assessment. Don't let that scare you. Um, it's just to see where you are. We want you to just do your best on that assessment um, so we could see where you are when it comes to, to math and we can find ways to best support you. Um, and then the second day we hope is going to be a field trip. We don't have that uh, just yet, but uh, we will let you know what's coming up with that. Um, so Summer Bridge will be July 19th through the 23rd, and the times will be from 8.30 in the morning to 12 p.m., okay? Um, and so we'll, we'll have that schedule for you, and that'll go out um, prior to Summer Bridge so you know the times and what classes will happen. But we're expecting that everybody um, participates and is ready to engage that week. We are also looking for opportunities for additional summer programming. Um, and as soon as we have those details, we will be sharing those details with you. The additional summer programming would not necessarily be hosted by ECS. They're just community partnerships that we have. And, it, and those pro, um, partnerships are completely optional. And uh, um, just stay tuned and we will be sharing those with you. Now, what is it that you should expect this year? Um, you're going to expect a lot of fun, a lot of caring, a lot of love, but also a lot of dedication and a lot of intentionality. Like Ms. Harris said, we want to make sure that you're not only excited about coming to school, but you're also in a place where you know that you can trust your student to come to school and that learning will be taking place and that um, community will be present and that the support will definitely always be at the leading um, front of every decision that we make. Um, as of, I would like to share with you that our first day of school is August 23rd, 2021. Um, we will be sharing our finalized calendar for the 2021-2022 academic year later this June. As of right now, we have not been able to complete the calendar because there are so many moving pieces. And we're actually very concerned about making sure that our current students have a successful in-person transition. And that's where a lot of time and dedication is going. But just so that you can write it down. Our first day of school will be August 23rd. This is a sample schedule of what our freshmen are going to be taking. Our freshmen are going to take ninth grade English, an ethnic studies class, integrated math one. They're going to be taking an art class, an environmental studies class, which is the equivalent to a science class, and a college prep class. All of our ninth graders are going to have six periods. It is in a block schedule, meaning that on shortened days, 
they're going to have all six classes plus the advisory class and the rest of the days are going to have three classes plus advisory. So classes are going to be longer. And if you're already part of our ECS team, then you are already very well aware of our block schedule. All of our incoming ninth graders are going to be enrolled in a combination of the subjects. So this is not necessarily the same schedule that every student is going to follow, but it is the same classes. And we're also going to be offering an after school program in which students are going to have um, academic support, the opportunity for academic support clubs and athletics. We are also very excited about our, the opportunity for our inner session um, month. This is a four week interdisciplinary inner session course. It usually takes place between semester one and two. So around January and students have the opportunity to solve real world problems through connection and through connecting and synthesizing different subjects and disciplines. So this is really literally the space where all of the teachers come together and they plan this really great project where all of the students get to collaborate. And not just that, there are four components to it. They get to work in groups. They get to have a presentation to community members and staff. They get to have an individual writing project and a reflection. And so students are graded in two parts to it. There is the unit exam that they have to take individually, and there is the culminating performance task in which they are graded as a team. Ms. Harris, would you like to add anything else to it? Unmute. Yeah, so during those those four weeks, students, as uh, Ms. G, or Dr. G mentioned, um, they will be able to be in groups, um, and then they will um, go through this process together, and it culminates with um, a community forum at the end, and students get to present what they worked on over the last four weeks. They um, have their their exam, and then they have the the reflection piece. And it's a great opportunity in the past when we could all be on campus together, we would have different community members come on campus. Um, we would have parents come to community forum where students are leading their projects, they're leading um, the presentations and inviting um, different community members to, to come out. So it's really, what I like about it is it's also student led. And so they have a lot of voice um, within the project as well. So there is some conversation in the chat box about being unable to read the slides if the slides are really small. Um, I don't know if there's a way to make that bigger art. And then there's some questions in the chat box. I'm sorry, Allison, what did, what did you want me to make bigger? Um, people aren't able to read what is on the slides. Oh, okay. Oh, um, okay. We're able to share the slides afterwards um, so we can send home a copy of the presentation. Um, and then there are some uh, questions in the chat box just yeah. to slow us down a little bit. I think there's a question about having PE. Allison, correct me if I'm mistaken, but students will not have PE for their ninth grade year. Their elective, it's pretty much chosen, and that is college prep. They will, however, have the opportunity to be part of um, the sports team after school, and we're going to be covering that information in the next couple of slides. Correct. So charter schools do not have to have um, physical education on their um required list of classes. Instead of offering physical ed as part of the school day, we do have an after school program as well as a sports program. Thank you. And there is another question around school uniforms and we're going to be talking about school uniforms in the next couple of slides as well. So just bear with me. We are also going to be offering field trips. Students will have the opportunity to take a handful of field trips throughout their time at ECHSG. 
They will be visiting local parks, um, beaches, local organizations, businesses, museums, and we're actually going to be having overnight outdoor educational experiences as well. All of the field trip opportunities are going to be in correlation to what they're learning in class. So there's an educational purpose. Um, during our summer program, our summer bridge program, we are really looking for a place in which we are going to have the opportunity to do something for the environment while at the same time, give the kids the opportunity to engage in some team building activities, reconnect with one another, get to know their teachers, and just start creating that culture where students um, just know each other. So when August 23rd rolls around, they will have at least one friendly face that they can connect with and they don't have to have that feeling of, I don't know anyone. Our after school program will also have opportunities for students to join a soccer team, a basketball team, baseball, softball, um, as well as a, we're going to be sending a summer survey where we're going to be surveying students what kind of interest they have for clubs. And so please be on the lookout for that survey. Sometime around June, we want to make sure that we know what our students want so that then we can identify sponsors at our school site that are willing to have that anime club or that chess club or that environmental club, um, that school beautification club. Um, but we're also going to be offering academic tutoring at least once a week for students that might need that extra support outside of our school hours. We are going to be having our sports partnership with our current high school with ECHS Lawndale. And so we're going to be able to compete against them um, and more details will follow us to the application that you will have to follow the fill out so that you can be a part of the team as well as um, hours and locations. I will now introduce to you Mr. Michael Martucci. He is our Director of Student Services and he will talk to you about our special population programming. Mr. Martucci. Thank you so much, Dr. Guardado. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Martucci. I'm our Director of Student Services. Um, we are in the process of hiring our special populations team, um, our EL teacher, as well as our special ed teacher. So um, we're really excited about that process and that's why they're not here to talk to you today. Um, First of all, um, our English language learner program, uh, we're gonna have comprehensive support for English language learners through designated and integrated ELD instruction. Um, integrated ELD instruction means it's built into the classroom and built into the structure of the way we do everything at our school. And designated ELD instruction means direct EL services for our students. Um, we're also going to have a ELAC meeting, which is a parent meeting, so we encourage all of our English learner parents to attend. Um, we want to have a lot of parent involvement in our program. Uh, our special education program, I want to mention that we support all learners here and accept all students in our program. We have a co-teaching inclusion-based model, which means most of our services take place within the context of the general education classroom. Um, and we'll be going through 30 day IEP processes at our start. So you'll be able to um, get to know the team as we get to know uh, your child. Uh, we also have um, students with 504 plans. Those are accommodations and supports for general education students who qualify for those supports under section 504 of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, Dr. G, if you could go to the next slide. Awesome. So in our enrollment packet, you will be asked um, whether your child is an English learner, whether your child has an IEP or a 504 plan. It's really important that you fill that out accurately and bring a copy of the most recent document um, to the school site. Um, we have a couple of incomplete um, documents, actually. So we'll be reaching out to you for those as well. Um, and remember, you can always contact your child's current school. Um, to get any, any records or documents from them. Um, they'll have to uh, give it to you within, a, within four days. 
Um, I'm going to put my email in the chat here for all of you um, if you have any questions. And our team will be reaching out to you um, soon. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Martucci. Are there any questions for him before he has to log off? Any questions specific to our special population programming? Ms. Colleen, I see that you um, raised your hand. Do you have a question? You can just unmute yourself or type it in the chat. Can you hear me? Yes. Good evening. Um, just question how for him. Um, how do I get my child tested? Because she is at um, ECMS over here in um, eighth grade. And um, I've had some meetings with the teachers and um, and, and her um, elementary school, she did have an IEP, but it didn't follow her to ECMS. So how can I get her tested or back into that kind of thing? Um, thanks so much for your question, Ms. Espinoza. Um, I'll be happy to um, actually reach out to you and we can connect offline and I'll definitely uh, be happy to answer that question for you individually, um, if that's you. okay. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. I will, um, can I directly chat you? I can, I will um, chat you my phone number. Okay, okay yeah, because you're putting your email Thanks in there so too. Okay, thank you. Also, there's a question that I, is in Spanish that I wasn't able to read, um, Dr. Guadado. Are you speaking of the one by Ms. Anna Morales? Yes. Okay, it's a statement and it just says that um, she was saying that she has the ability to make her screen or the slides bigger on her end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. Martucci. Um, there were also a couple of questions around our dress code policy. Students will be asked to wear black or khaki pants or skirts with the skirts of reasonable length, um, no leggings. And these are all of the colors that our students will be able to choose from. So for as long as they're wearing one of these 11 colors, our students will be following our dress code policy. If you're interested in getting the logo embroidery, it is available at Cactus Threads and the address is 162nd Street and Hawthorne Boulevard. Um, we will be giving you the phone number through our website so that you can call to make sure of their operating hours. But as of right now, um, just so that you know, these are the colors. You can find these colors anywhere. And for as long as they're wearing these colors, they will be in our dress code policy. Cactus Thread also sells the shirts and the colors, all the different colored shirts there. And Ms. Allison, can you please give him a little bit of background as to why we have so many choices, please? Sure. So um, <laughs> when we first started ECHS in Lawndale, um, we did not have a dress code um, and we were sharing a campus with the with a church. And that led to several kinds of concerns being um, illuminated by the church. And then we ended up, as did many other schools at the time, moving to a dress code policy that was more limiting. Um, when students um, thought about widening the dress code policy and kind of creating their own dress code policy from what we had started with, because we initially only had two colors, um, their proposal was to have many different colors. Um, and they could have done a lot of different things um, and proposed something totally different, which if our incoming ninth grade class wants to collaborate with um, leadership at the school site and work to present an alternative dress code policy to our board of directors, we are always open to hearing from our students about an alternative policy. Um, when given the students the choice in the past um, and uh, presenting that to them, no one ever took us up on the option. So if your student is excited about alternatives um, and they wanna work with us to create something that's 
more unique and more special and more aligned to ECS, we're happy to talk with them about it. Thank you so much, Allison. And there's a lot of questions around just not being able to see the colors. The colors are white, stone, navy blue, black, charcoal, kelly green, eggplant, lime green, teal, raspberry, and electric blue. And students have to wear black or khaki pants, no jeans and no leggings. There are, all of these colors are at Cactus Threads and on display. Do they also sell pants? I don't know if they sell pants. I don't think so. I've never known them to sell pants. I, I, I don't think so either. Yeah, but you can find them at your local Target, at your local, Walmart. if you're lucky in Halls. Yeah, Calls. And Allison, is the embroidered logo required? The embroidered logo is logo is not required. Although mo many students in my experience have chosen to get the logo. Yeah, so I've also seen students buy shirts, you know, bulk shirts from somewhere else and then maybe go to Cactus Threads and get them embroidered as well. So that sometimes saves some costs. So there's questions about like the sweatshirts and what can go on sweatshirts and the pullover jackets. Ms. Harris, do you wanna talk to that? Um, if I re remember correctly, they need to be in the uniform color um, and no logos other than- The school the, logo. The school mm -hmm. logo. School mm -hmm. logo, logo, or I believe a university logo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You can wear a university sweater and then once we get into the swing of things, we might have like college Fridays and wear college shirts. Um, but I believe it's college or it has to be a plain sweatshirt or a sweatshirt with a school logo. And we will not be selling the shirts or um, sweaters at our school site. Um, we still have seats available. If you know of any ninth graders that are still looking for a home, um, please make sure that you send them our way. If you go to ECHSGardena.org, you will see the now enrolling logo or the banner pop up. Please feel free to click on it so that you can um, go to our enrollment page and somebody from our team will make sure to contact you. Um, also, and this is a big reminder for any student that's interested in participating, actually all of our students have to participate in our summer bridge, so I will make sure that I make that very clear. All of our students need to participate in our summer bridge, um, unless there are extenuating circumstances that you and I will talk on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but all of our students have to participate in our summer bridge, but before you do so, you need to make sure that you have completed the ECHS Gardena student emergency release form and the authorization to release students permanent cumulative uh, files form. We are going to be sending these two forms out on Friday morning. When you get the form, they're very simple Google forms. And if we do not have them by mid-June, you're going to get a phone call from us and a reminder that you need to make sure that you fill this out. They should not take you more than five minutes to complete the form. But I want to make sure that I really get this point across. These two forms need to be completed so that your student participates in our Summer Bridge program. In our Summer Bridge program, it's mandatory for all of our students. If you have not completed your enrollment paperwork, um, please contact Ms. Gower. She has been sending a lot of individualized messages to all of you. We have about 22 parents who have an incomplete application. So if you are one of those, I will be making those phone calls between tomorrow and Wednesday 
so that I can support you in either uploading or identifying what kind of documents you are still missing. But if you have not already done so, we need to make sure that we have all of this paperwork completed before our Summer Bridge program as well. Um, there is a question in the chat about how can can a sweatshirt have a logo on it? And my recollection, Ms. Harris, is that it was allowed if it was smaller than a quarter, but I don't know if that's accurate. We are not going to be doing that. It will need to be the ECS or a university logo. Okay. And then there was another question about shoes which I answered, there's no requirement for shoes. Um, we just ask that students think about what's safe, um, depending upon the kinds of activities that they're doing at school on any given day. There are a few questions in Spanish that I'm um, going to answer. I am so sorry. Um, one question is, um, there's a question about uniform dresses with a polo underneath. So if you wear a long sleeve shirt underneath your uniform polo shirt, that's okay. Um, it's one of the ways that our students like to play with the logo and uh, or play with the dress code requirements, um, which we in some ways encourage them to do. Um, and then uh, Dr. Guadado, do you want to answer the one about that's in Spanish? Yes, ma'am. The question asks if it's okay for students to wear ribbed jeans or pants. And the answer to that is no, <laughs> it is not okay. We're not going to be allowing ribbed jeans. So there's no jeans that's black or khaki pants. pants. Are shorts and capris allowed? I believe so. I think so too. So they can wear shorts as long as they're not short shorts. Knee length. <laughs> Will there be free days for them? So at the high school, this is my memory too, uh, Ms. Harris, so you please correct me. But what I remember is um, as they keep their GPA over their four years of high school, that um, students earn free dress passes and they also earn um, free dress days. So if they have um, a GPA that's greater than, and I don't know the exact GPA average, but it is in the student parent handbook, um, then they do get free dress passes. And then ultimately as seniors, they might have a free dress pass every single day and they wear it around their um, shirt um, as a placard and that's all they have to wear is that placard and then they can wear whatever they want um, as seniors. Yes. So they earn greater and greater freedoms with the dress code as they show increased responsibility over their four years of high school. Yes. And, you know, as we're also building school culture and maybe having spirit weeks, of course, we want to make sure that we get it right the first semester. Um, and then once we have like a student council, um, we do have spirit days where students can, you know, be a superhero for the day or um, we have like a 80s music day. So um, there are opportunities where you can get creative um, within certain boundaries. Um, but those those opportunities come up as well. And then there's a question about um, Summer Bridge being at ECHS Gardena. Summer Bridge will be at ECHS Gardena. Um, and then also there is a question about customizing their jackets and hoodies. We are not going to be allowing that. Um, because we are part of a community, we're part of a team. So we want to make sure that there is also a sense of equity and um, we want to make sure that um, we also respect who, we're, who we are as a school um, and students will have plenty of choice with their uniform color. So we're not going to be allowing that. And as for all of the free dress, we're going to definitely be giving you a lot more information. We want to make sure that a lot of those uh, events are student led. And so the focus of this meeting was specifically to be able to give you information that was relevant for our summer bridge, 
um, program and to just get you excited about who our team members are and, um, and the work that we are doing to make sure that there is a successful transition to high school for all of your students. And I will say with sports teams, um, I was also a softball coach. We had sweaters that represented our sports teams. So that's also an opportunity for you to have maybe like a different kind of uh, ECHS sweater as well. So um, if you want that freedom, join a sports team, you can have a different sweater or a t-shirt. Yes. And yes, the slides and the recording are going to be posted and emailed to all of the participants on today's meetings. So there's a question about, do they need a vaccine before school starts? We are not going to be requiring for the vaccine to, um, it's not a mandatory requirement. It is, however, highly encouraged now that it is um, available to 12 year olds and older. So it hasn't become state law yet that the vaccine is required. And we're following the guidelines of CDC and recommending that the vaccine um, be taken by anybody who can, who's eligible. There are no lockers on our campuses at any of our campuses. In the fall, will there be hybrid fully online or in person? We're planning for an in-person program for fall and for summer bridge. Um, we're doing those three days of online. If there are any extenuating circumstances where a student would not be able to join us in person, then that's a conversation that we would have for fall. And we will be able to provide an opportunity for online classes, but we want to make sure that I make it clear that we're planning for an in-person return. Are there any other questions that we can answer? It is now 6.22 and I want to make sure that I respect the time of all of our parents. I really appreciate all of um, the questions. They have been very helpful in terms of us guiding our next presentation as well. Students will be getting their laptops during summertime, during our summer bridge, which is the reason why we're also making it a mandatory summer bridge because we'll be giving them everything that they need. Students will have the opportunity to take a foreign language next year. Um, this year, their elective is college prep and art. The backpack is definitely a choice, um, an individual choice. We are not requiring a rolling backpack. Um, that's definitely whatever your student is most comfortable with. We're going to be releasing more information for the in-person transition as we get closer to uh, August. And so if we can just kind of hold on to those questions, we'll love to answer them later. All of our curriculum, it's online. They might have some consumables for math or other subjects, um, but most of our curriculum, it's an online curriculum. So they will have textbooks some of those textbooks will be online, but I don't wouldn't, is, is that all gonna be online? I'm not positive. Like they'll have, they'll have reading, they'll have novels to read that are not online. We've leaned into distance learning pretty heavily this year and I've gotten pretty proficient at it. So we're gonna be able to provide a lot of online support in a way that we um, never have in the past when we go back to school like normal. So there's a question about um, professional development and when is the early release day? We are going to be following ACHS Lawndale. So early release day will be on the same day that Lawndale has it, which is of right now is on Monday. And then there's a question, will they have sex ed? Sex ed, and correct me if I'm mistaken, it's um, not a requirement for high school. 
I think there's a requirement in middle school for it. Fifth grade. Um, they, they do get, um, it's embedded within the biology curriculum as well, which is a 10th grade class. Um, and there is, um, I'm uh, bummed that um, Ms. Harris left because she can talk to you from the counselor's perspective, what kinds of conversations the counselors have with students regarding sex education. And then there's a question um, about sweaters with school logo on it. Where do they sell it? So we don't sell um, sweaters with the school logo on it at the moment. Um, it's not part of the dress code policy. They're able to choose any sweater they want in the colors that are within the dress code policy. Um, and as Ms. Uh, Harris said, there um, different sports teams will have different um, jackets that they may have as part of their programming, and then they might have a um, sports um, jacket with a with our with our ECHS um, logo on it. Yes, the Zoom recording will be sent to you along with the PowerPoint. So there's a question, and I'm not sure that it was fully answered yet. Um, Ms. Ortega asks, so students will be going in different groups each day, and I am not positive. Uh, maybe she can tell us a little bit more about what her question is. Um, the early release time for Mondays, I don't believe is decided yet, um, but um, mm, so we can't, we'll, we'll be able to give you more information about that early release day um, during mm -hmm. our, during our summer meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Um, Art, is there a way to unmute Adriana Ortega? Um, normally, um, at the high school, normally the end of the school day is around 3.30. Mm -hmm. Students may have colored hair. She can unmute herself. She can talk now. Um, she's on her... A cell phone, so she may not be able to unmute herself, Art. Um, my question was, are the students going to stay there the full seven hours, or is it going to be cut into shorter time? Um, are you talking about Summer Bridge, or are you talking about um, the school in fall? School in fall. At this moment, we're planning for full day instruction in the fall. So unless the guidelines say that we're unable to do that, our plan is to return to normal instruction in the fall with an opportunity for, for students to choose an alternative online program um, if required by um, the Department of uh, Education. Okay, also um, it's gonna be different students going different days? No, all students will go It'll be like full, it'll be like normal school. The expectation is we will return to normal school in the fall. Currently what's happening in the, um, in the state of California is there's been less and less um, uh, virus breakouts and um, the, there's been a reduction in concern because of that. And there's also been an increase in the number of people that are being vaccinated. And so the more people that get vaccinated, the easier it's going to be for us to all return in the fall. 
Okay, thank you. We're going to be answering the last couple of questions here. Will masks be required in August? We yes. expect masks to be required. And, school, and there's a question about when school will start and it will start anywhere between eight and 8.30. There's another question around um, the Gardena Summer Bridge being shared with the Launder school students. No, they will be kept separately. As a matter of fact, Lawndale will have their Summer Bridge one week earlier than Gardena will. There's a question about a cheerleading team. Um, we're gonna be conducting a survey as Dr. Guardado said, um, which um, will determine what kinds of after school programming we begin with in the ninth grade year. So, if your students interested in cheerleading, make sure they make that known and get their friends to also indicate their interest so that we can start um, moving, you know, start with programming that more of our kids are interested in. I'm looking back over the questions to see if we missed anything. Okay, so I guess if we um, don't have any more questions, we have reached the end of our meeting so that we can respect your dinner time. Um, so let's take maybe one more minute or so, so that you can add any more questions to a chat. And if you don't have any, thank you very much for your time, for all of the questions. The more questions we get, the more involved I know that you are as a parent and the more that we know how is it that we can guide our future presentations. Once again, our um, record, video recording and the a slide deck it's going to be emailed to you and it will also be uploaded to our school website so feel free to check our website on a weekly basis because there are always new updates thank you very much i do want to clarify something that um uh mr martucci noted and that is that there is a sex ed requirement at high school as well as in middle school um, and our counseling team normally supports our uh, high school teachers with meeting that requirement. And that's why I was uh, bummed at that moment in time when uh, Ms. Lacey jumped off the phone because she could uh, tell us more about that. And uh, I know that um, there's a question around starting meetings a little bit later. We can definitely offer a second option um, so we can offer one at 5.30 for those parents that can join us at this time and maybe offer another one at a later time for those of you that have to work. I will definitely be open to that. So thank you very much. Enjoy your evening and enjoy the rest of your week. <laughs>